everybody. Welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. And I'm your co-host, Emma Weagle. This is my daughter, Emma. You've seen her in a couple videos so far. Going back to Grimm, I think, was the first one. I believe so. Where you were a kid on the couch. And then, um, I think you popped up in one other. Then, um, so the only other co-host co -host I have ever had is all the way back when we were barely in the double digits with uh, my friend Isaias Acosta when he talked to me about Spirit of the Century and Fate in general. So now Emma is here. She will be joining us as co-hosting duties for hopefully several episodes coming up. And she is wants to talk about a couple of the new D&D products today that um, I didn't have. So I figured this is a great opportunity to bring her in and see how we can go. So Emma, why don't you start with your first one you want to talk about? Perfect. The first book I'd like to talk about is Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. It is particularly special to me because it was a graduate um, uh, going away to college gift. But um, Ravenloft as a concept is very exciting to me because Curse of Strahd was the first module that I read and saw played through that really got me into DMing. Um, it comes as no surprise to anyone that I grew up in a home that was very, that thought Cthulhu and Eldritch Horror and horror in general was very interesting, as my dad's a big Cthulhu fan. And I had never considered that you could do horror in Dungeons and Dragons. I thought for a very long time all you could really do was high fantasy and if you flavored it right, maybe a Western. But I hadn't thought that you could do such very grim, dark things that were very serious in Dungeons and Dragons. And as I read Curse of Strahd, it got me very excited to DM my own stories. Um, so that brings me to Ravenloft. And what I, the main thing that drew me to it was it told you, it gave you ideas for how to run a horror game. It gave you different types of horror, things like body horror, gothic horror, apocalyptic horror, all of those wonderful ideas, and gave you inspiration for it. How to do the dreadlords, how to do the domains, how to do all of those wonderful things. So Ravenloft isn't new with this Van Richten's Guide. It goes all the way back to second edition D&D. Hell, it may have been first edition D&D for the very first version of it. I've always had one of the issues that Emma was talking about with Ravenloft in that when it comes to horror role-playing, I cut my teeth on Call of Cthulhu, and as far as I'm concerned, there is none finer for that particular genre. However, what they've done with Ravenloft is interesting because even back then... It came out of a module written by Tracy and Laura Hickman, which was kind of famous because you could almost run it multiple times because sort of like what we saw in Curse of Strahd, in order to kill Strahd and escape the domain, you needed practically a clue game where you needed the weapon, the place, and what was the third? It, well, the person. Person. So you needed those three things, just like a clue game, in order to kill Strahd. Now, what, what they did was when they angled up from there, they created other domains of dread. And originally, when Ravenloft was presented, the idea was you play in your normal game world, be it Greyhawk, Dragonlance, even um, nothing for Birthright that was too late in the game. But Dark Sun had a couple domains in there, too. Pretty much anywhere there was a world for D&D, they made domains so that in Ravenloft, so that you go in there, you have to solve a mystery, and survive the adventure, and leave. Well, that changed with the publication of the book Domains of Dread, where it actually gave you the option to create characters that were born within Ravenloft. So you have all these domains that are ruled by some sort of dre uh, Dark Lord or Dread Lord. And there's a curse associated with them. Like, there's something there that this Dreadlord or Dark Lord was so fundamentally awful that the universe decided to shove them into this pocket dimension of suck. And in this pocket dimension of suck, they're punished for something, but they can also be a royal pain in the ass to anyone who's a player character in the domain. So, Ravenloft even had some presence in 3rd edition that, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was published by White Wolf. Then uh, I don't believe there was Ravenloft for fourth, and this brings it in for fifth. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn this over to Emma, and I'm going to ask her to go through sort of her point of view and organization of the realms, and then I'm going to ask you to talk about a few of your favorites. Perfect. 
So some, a lot of these were very based, clearly based on the classic Hollywood monsters. You have the mummy, you have your ghosts, you have your vampires, your werewolves, you have your damsel in distress, very messed up fairy tales. Uh, some of my personal favorites were Dementlu with the Grand Masquerade, uh, Ikath with Tian Chang, and Lamordia because Frankenstein always has a very special place in my heart. So why, why the first two that you liked? What was in those that appealed to you? It was very dark fairy tales. So there is the masquerade, which feels very dark Cinderella, uh, and figuring out if you are who you really say you are, and the sort of underlying psychological horror of that, and Ikath, which takes place mostly in the dream worlds. Oh. Uh, where there are people going around and monitoring those who are awake in the domain versus those who have been in the deep sleep of the perfect world. Okay. That's interesting. Now, one of the things that I noticed was there's a bit of updating to some of these worlds. For example, Falconovia. That's the realm of eternal warfare where the living dead keep coming back and attacking everything. Yes, the zombie world. What is her name? The uh, Dark Lord. I believe it is Vladeska Drakov. She's the daughter of Vlad Drakov, who was the Lord of Falconovia in the previous editions of the setting. Now, the other one I want to talk about is Aslan's domain. Um, what's it called? Aslan Rex? Uh, it's Darkon. Darkon, which Aslan was one of the original bad guys in Ravenloft. He was sort of a witch, if you can imagine how, you know, you have a domain ruled by an evil undead sorcerer. I'll add Conan the Barbarian and you're good. So, but with this, though, one of the things that has happened is in previous editions of the game, Aslan either escaped or destroyed himself escaping in grand conjunctions. So, uh, this world, this realm seems like it's constantly blowing up. Is that what's going on there? Yes. This one was labeled as very apocalyptic and disaster horror. Okay. It's sort of frozen in time mid-explosion. Oh, so how do you move around in that? Or is, is, it, is, it, is it detailed? Because I'm like seeing to work your way through some kind of tower, but like the steps are over there and you have to jump 20 feet to get to them and then it falls off there. Does, does that feel, directly answer? I'm feeling answer? it's very M.C. Escher type stuff. Mm. That's really, You know, there's a Doctor Who episode based on M.C. Escher's work. Fifth Doctor, Castor Valva, his first episode. Mm -hmm. Sorry, random bit of trivia for you there. So, the other thing I'll add that they have done with this version, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you will, is once upon a time, Ravenloft was an actual map, and these domains were pressed together. Looking at this now, it looks like every single domain is separated by the mists. Yes. So it's no longer you have to leave Barovia and go into Darkon to do something. Now it's whatever narrative your GM feels like you want to do. Yes, you could very much do it as, like, the ultimate dungeon crawl. Oh, yeah, the ultimate domain crawl. Mm -hmm. yeah, good point. Some of these darker fairy tale adventures. Is there a way to link these into the um, Beyond the Witchlight Fens? I sure hope so. Um, one of my personal favorites was uh, one that's just known as the Carnival. Um, that has That's the one with the um, sentient sword. Spoilers! Um, you're fine. When I first read that one, I remember uh, Wilds Beyond the Witchlight was coming out, and I was wondering if you could put those two together, because those are very, um, very much similar in the idea of the carnival, and if I ever do run those, that I would definitely put those two together. Could you make one like a Seely and Unseely Fae? Where Probably. Ravenloft is the Unseely, and the Wilds Beyond the Witchlight would be the Seely Fae? Probably. I remember Wilds Beyond the Witch Light being a lot less grim dark, but still decently scary. Okay. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. My name's Kurt Weagle. For those of you who no didn't know or cared to forget, this is my daughter, Emma Weagle, and this was Ravenloft Domains of Dread. Oh, I always end with one of these. Is it worth buying or not, and to whom? I think it's definitely worth buying if you want to run more horror stuff with your friends and group of friends and gaming groups. Um... I've certainly used it a lot with writing my own campaigns, not necessarily using the pre-boxed sets, but I found it to be pretty interesting and useful for inspiration for things. All right. 
Final note, finally, is we have a sister show to this called Board Game Archaeology, run by the producer Rob and his son. So if you're interested in board games from the past, and they have some moldy oldies on there, uh, go take a look. So for Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. I'm your co-host, Emma Weagle. Good day and good gaming. Thank you.